The nemesis of love is fear. Fear creeps into you, builds up walls, traps you inside yourself until one day there's nothing left to win or lose. Nothing left but the thirst for the one drink you don't have. That quote by Diane Fisher is the introduction to my new novel, Never Close Your Heart. Here's an excerpt from this book, which is a sequel to a book published a few years ago, an Essence bestseller, When a Sister's Fed Up. They are standalone novels, but if you're interested in reading both, is When a Sister's Fed Up and Never Close Your Heart. So in this scene, the Henry family is in church. Pastor Carson rose from his throne-like chair on the pulpit. His shadow looked like a fingertip on the giant screen behind him, where the sermon's video transitioned from a large wooden cross on Calvary to a Madonna-like scene of a church mother and her child. Sloan felt a little bit of bile in her throat. How long is this god-awful Mother's Day program going to be? She couldn't recall the specifics, but she knew God did a bunch of stuff in one day. He was efficient. He made clouds, animals, fish, and ski lodges on a Tuesday morning. And Reverend Carson was going into a second hour of talking about nothing. She used selfie mode on her phone to apply lipstick. Then she liked a few posts on Twitter and played a game of Candy Crush. She glared at her husband sitting on her left, beaming as if he were somebody's mama. She closed her eyes, bowed her head, and audibly repeated her standard prayer. Why, God, why? In the name of Jesus, Timothy, Phineas, and ten other white men, why? Her fervent but ineffectual prayer was interrupted by a light tap on her right shoulder. You okay, Mama? Ever scooted over until their thighs were touching. He moved his small hand from her shoulder to her forearm. She opened her eyes and turned to her son. He seemed worried. He was perpetually anxious since she got arrested. When she was home, he was lurking nearby all the time. She reminded herself to be more patient. Feeling guilty, Sloan took his hand and squeezed it in a gesture of reassurance. I'm fine, darling. Thank you for asking. I'm going to pray that you don't go to jail, he whispered and bowed his head. A spotlight circling the room shone on his angelic face. As usual, Sloan was pleasantly surprised by how well he turned out in the looks department. He was 75% a replica of her with the appropriate masculine touches. The remainder of his appearance stemmed from his relatively unattractive father, a man who looked like he had a boxing match with the wind and lost every round. What possessed her to marry her father's friend, she mused, and not for the first time. She could have had any guy at her college, but she went for the mature guy with a mid-six-figure salary and stock shares, the sure thing with established credit. Sloan often fantasized about what her life would have been like if she'd only gotten that LASIK surgery earlier in life. She sure wouldn't have married Scott's ugly butt, money or not. It wasn't love that made her blind. It was early onset cataracts. The slideshow stopped and the pastor droned on about motherhood, Mary, and a woman's highest calling. Two rows of the pastor's family his wife, his children, and their spouses were seated on the stage. She found it unbelievable that every one of them had been called by the Lord God Almighty to preach and receive a salary. It was her opinion that if the Almighty wrote Ten Commandments for Moses, he could post those job openings instead of silently calling all the Carsons into executive management. Mom, can I play games on your phone? Ever whispered. No, pay attention, Scott said before Sloan could reply. Ignoring him, Sloan opened her TikTok app and put her phone on her lap where Ever could see it. Ever giggled. At that moment, Pastor Carson told the congregation, 
Ladies, the easiest way to sustain a Christ-like demeanor for motherhood is having a strong, Christ-loving head of household to cover and guide you. Sloan was mentally disagreeing with the Reverend when Scott grabbed the phone. What in hell? Her mouth was agape as she watched him put her most loved possession in his suit pocket. Oh, now you want to be assertive. She decided to let that go for now. She crossed her legs in that moment. She didn't care that her ankle monitor was exposed beneath the hem of her pants. She swung her leg, kicking the pew in front with the toe of her shoe. She wished she was sitting with her father. She leaned to one side and spied him on the front row with the army of deacons dressed in their Sunday best. She leaned the other way, trying to get a clear view around the ridiculously big hat on the church member in front of her. It didn't take long for her to locate her mother sitting near the front of the church on her favorite pew with First Lady Maybell, Uncle Junior, Grandma and Grandpa Henry, and some man that resembled her baby brother. That couldn't be him, though. She moved right and left for a clearer view but couldn't see enough of the guy to be sure. Trey hadn't attended church since he started working as an accounting specialist at Baxter and Foss six years earlier. Thinking about her brother made her tap her restless foot faster. Trey should have accepted the offer from Uncle Junior to do the books for his clubs two years ago. Dummy. Wasting a degree in accounting and working 70 hours a week doing data entry when he could join a family business. Who does that? His dumb job was his excuse for everything he should be doing but wasn't. If she had her phone, she would text him. She was pondering the mystery visitor when she noticed her husband grip the pew in front of them and stand. She reached for her floor on the purse, assuming it was time for the benediction. Ever whispered, He's standing for prayer. Pastor Carson said anyone fighting against principalities and strongholds in their homes should stand up. Sloan's hair whipped like Taylor Swift spying Kanye West backstage during an award show. Wait, what? Sisters and brothers of the church, if someone near you is standing, that means they have a burden we must help them bear. I want two or three of you to go to that member of the family of Christ and pray for them. We have the power to cast out demons. If only two or three can agree. To Sloan's horror, a dozen crosswords begin to move toward Scott with outstretched hands. A zombie apocalypse. Didn't the man say two or three? Really? Everybody needs to pray for my husband? At that moment, a sister pushed her way past Ever Ever's knees to get closer to Scott. She looked at Sloan as if she expected her to stand and pray for Scott also. Sloan waved her program like she was having a hot flash because she was. He is determined to embarrass me, she thought. Now the entire dang church knows we are having marriage problems and they'll assume I'm the reason. One of the brothers touching Scott started praying loudly and the woman who was practically in Ever's lap said, Sister Lee, do you want me to pray for you also? You don't have to stand up. I understand. She put her hand on Sloan's head and said, Holy Father. Sloan swatted her hand away and stood. She intentionally bumped into Scott. The loud praying paused, then resumed even louder. Sloan dug her nails into Scott's forearm at the seam of his tailored suit. What man in a thousand dollar suit needs prayer? Why was he taking prayers away from poor people with real problems? Ooh, she hated him so much right now. Please, baby Lord Jesus, please help my daddy. Ever cried out. Sloan rolled her eyes. Everyone in the church had their head bowed in prayer except her and that man sitting between her mother and Uncle Junior. At that very second, the slightly familiar figure turned to look at her and flash a lopsided grin. Trey at the 8 a.m. service? Sloan had one thought. He must be broke. <laughs> I'll stop there, but if you'd like to know more about this family drama with the Henrys from my previous book, When a Sister's Fed Up, Pick up a copy of Never Close Your Heart on Amazon or wherever books are sold in ebook and in print. 
and you don't have to have a Kindle reader anymore. You can read ebooks on any app. So I hope you'll grab a copy. I really appreciate you listening. I appreciate your support. And if you want to know more about what's going on with Perpetual Motion and me, Dr. Mo Anderson, please click subscribe or like, follow, depending on what platform you are on, and please share our post. I appreciate you. Have a great day. And remember, never close your heart.